with issues that Ghanaians need to understand and appreciate that would inform their judgment in terms of voting massively for His Excellency Nana Dankwa Kufado. Today we have our uh, uh, Honorable Minister Sheikh to lead us in the press conference, but as part of the team, we have Deputy Minister of uh, uh, Youth and Sports, Honorable Perio Kujato, we have His Excellency Ambassador to India, Honorable Echi uh, uh, Makukwe, and my own bra brother, Data Dankwa Institute, Richard Abla. Ahiyabla, who is also with me, and Ahiyaba, and Kofi Japan and all the rest of the team are also here supporting us. Please, let's come in quickly. Please, we either put our phones on silent or on flight mode, so that we will not have any terrible interference in the course of the uh, press conference. Honorable, we are, we are ready for you. Thank you very much, sir. Can we have some silence? Okay, in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, praise be to Allah, Lord of the Worlds, Master of the Day of Judgment, you alone we worship, you alone we ask for help. Guide us onto the straight path, the path of those on whom you have bestowed your favor, not of those who go astray, nor of those who earn your anger. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, good afternoon, and welcome to yet another press conference by the campaign of the new patriotic party. We continue to be grateful for your support and help in carrying our message to the Ghanaian people. Together we shall build a vibrant democracy that will become the envy of the world. Yadamasi, Mungodi, Tepaya, Akwe, Wandanyeshi. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, we have barely four days to decision day when Ghanaians will be required to choose their leader for the next four years. We want to encourage every Ghanaian who has his or her name on the voter roll to make a firm commitment to come out on December 7 and cast their votes for Nana Adodankwa Ekufuadu. If before 2016, you took voting for granted, if before 2016, you saw voting as an empty ritual, if before 2016, you viewed politics and voting as a worthless venture, I am sure you have revised your notes. And why not? I guess we have all seen the video of the young man from a village near Adeso, who before 2016 was consigned to a life of destitution, hopelessness, and despair. I am sure you have seen the video of Enki, the young man from Jwabe, who before 2016 spent his life on Lake Bosomtri as, as an errand boy for fisher folk. I am sure you have seen the video of Shadrach Eshen from Kojokrum, who before 2016 had lost all hope of progress in life. How did their lives take a dramatic turn? As Zongo minister, it is important that I mention Rukaya, the girl from Abuabu in Kumasi, Abuabu Zongo in Kumasi whose mother is a head potter and who before 2016 would have also been consigned to a future of head portrait. Now, how did the lives of all these young men and women take a dramatic turn? How did that poor boy from Kojokrum end up as a sports prefect in an elite school like Accra Academy? How did the young man from the village near Adesu end up in Adesu Secondary School and now on his way to a university in the United Kingdom? These are stories, these are stories of just a few of the hundreds 
and perhaps thousands of young men and women in nearly every hamlet, village, town, and city across the country. What did it take to rescue these young men and women from a life of hopelessness to a life of hope? It took the votes of 5,755,758 Ghanaians to make Akufuado president and for him to implement his vision of free SHS, which has revived the hopes of these young boys and girls, and of course, the hopes of thousands of others. of a better future. Now, fellow Ghanaians, think about the wasted years of 2009 to 2017. What the election of 2016 misery, unquote. Thankfully, the more than 5 million Ghanaians who voted for Akufuado in 2016 took the opportunity that beckoned. And by it, they have put this country back on the path of progress and development. In the Akan version of the national anthem, we are told that those who have gone before us have done their bit. It is for me and you to continue from where they left off. I am sure that those who voted for Akufuado in 2016 and who sadly have joined their ancestors would be smiling from the other side at all the good stories that their votes have generated. Think about my friend Abdul Razak, the barber near Achimota Lorry Park, who because of five years of doing so, was hardly able to keep body and soul together. Think about how he closed shop often and sent the many apprentice young boys and girls home to a future of hopelessness. Think about Abdul Razak today, whose salon is now buzzing with activity, thanks to the restoration of power by the visionary Akufuado. Let us make progress. Let us come out in our numbers and help take these young and men, young men and women's future to its logical next step. A leader is the person who takes the bull by the horns. A leader does not complain. A leader accepts responsibility for his or her life and his or her decisions. In a recent interview with Kwesi Pratt, you heard candidate Mahama of the NDC saying that his campaign is slow because Akufuado has not fixed the roads. No wonder candidate Mahama has become the butt of many jokes in Ghana. This is laughable. For all the eight years that candidate Mahama was the monarch of all he surveyed, he managed to do only a single road in all the five regions of the north. Even that road Fufusu Sola is in deplorable, deplorable state as we speak. In any event, is he not the one who wrote a green book painting a very glossy picture of the state of infrastructure in Ghana? As the former Central Regional Chairman of the NDC has said, why is candidate Mahama calling on Akufuado to fix roads? Alote Jacob says all the roads had been fixed in the Green Book. John Mahama accepts no responsibility for anything, including the slowness of his campaign. Hey, amazing. Yet he wants to be credited with all the good things that are happening under President Ekufuado. After claiming that he introduced free SHS, 
which as I stated has become the butt of many jokes in Ghana now says he started one district one factory as Gideon Boako says JM will soon claim that he is the one who carried Jesus's cross have you seen that JM is now rewriting the entire NDC manifesto JM has absolutely no faith in manifestos he doesn't believe in them he sees them at, as empty ritual which are just a part of the requirements for prosecuting a presidential campaign but it is even worse that he does not believe in his own manifesto you can be wishy-washy about everything and anything but to be wishy-washy about a manifesto too haba if i was in the classroom i will write an academic type article titled from chimpe to mafaninina the story of a confused presidential campaign today jm says that in the unlikely event that he wins he will absorb the fees of all who enter university next year so what has become of the manifesto com commitment to absorb half what went into the chimpe thinking we cannot say it enough jm is wishy-washy flippy floppy indecisive completely bereft of ideas as to how to run a nation ladies and gentlemen of the media just refer to a copy of the parliamentary hazard of 22nd june 2006 and i have in my hands a copy of the hazard of 22nd june 2006 and when you turn to question number 501 it stands in the name of one john dramani mahama member of parliament for bole bamboy which means candidate mahama of the ndc in this he's asking and basically chastising president kufu for failing to divide the then northern region because he alleges in this hazard that the then yobura bawadoshi had petitioned the president for the division of the northern region and he was wondering why that had not been done even when the honorable minister for presidential affairs at that time the honorable kojon Pieni, was trying to draw his attention to the processes that need to be followed he would have none of it but as they say god doesn't sleep a few years later he became vice president and according to him even in his vice presidency he really was running the affairs of state and then subsequently became president what did he do about dividing the northern region about giving his own people the people of savannah a region which they had been clamoring for for ages what did he do nothing absolutely nothing zilch he went to sleep completely just enjoying the trappings of office For somebody who spoke passionately about creating the savannah region in 2006 one would have expected that it would be one of the first things that he would tackle when he becomes president but no he was plagued by doubt as he always has been since his childhood listen to candidate mahama talk about himself in his own book my first coup d'etat and i quote him all the decisions i have made in my life all he says all all every single decision he's made in his life has been plagued with doubt doubt in simpler language john mahama is saying of himself that he's never been certain about anything in life that is a terrible judgment to make of your own self and how do you expect to entrust the affairs of state to somebody who has no certainty about anything ever in life because leadership 
It's about certainty. It's about certainty of vision. It's about conviction. It's about steadfastness. It's about belief. It's about confidence. These are the things that make leadership anywhere from the Australian Sea to the coast of South Africa. That is what it is. It is a universal principle. If you don't have it, you don't qualify for leadership. I will go on. He says of himself, it can be challenging to sustain that feeling of hope or the belief that things will turn out for the best. Again, I would explain in simpler language. What he's saying is that for him, he's never been able to sustain the belief that anything will turn out right. It is basically an accentuation of his first statement that he's always plagued by doubt. Again and again, I have felt, and I'm quoting him on, again and again, I have felt like that boy, Dramani, on the bicycle going downhill fast without any brakes and not knowing which way to turn, unquote. It took the boldness of leadership and vision of President Ekufuado to give candidate Mahama a region. President Ekufuado gave him a region, the Savannah region. The people of Savannah will remember on December 7. You saw when he went to Damango a few days ago and saw the groundswell of support for our candidate for Damango, Abu Jinapo, the deputy chief of staff. You heard what he said about Abu Jinapo. He said he should go to his father's hometown and contest. He shouldn't come here to Damango, where his mother comes from. How can a former president be so ignorant about the basic laws of Ghana, about basic laws that qualify somebody to stand for parliamentary candidacy? You don't have that understanding. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, it will seem that candidate Mahama is still on that bicycle without brakes and going downhill, confused as to which way to turn. But inshallah, we shall not be passengers on his bicycle, which per his own conclusion is doomed to end in a ditch. Indeed, we got off his bicycle in 2016 when we got to the Jubilee House Junction. We are no longer interested in riding on that bicycle. We are on board the Akufuado train and it is bound to glory. It has restored the hopes of thousands of young boys and girls. It has revived small, medium, and large-scale industries by resolving the power crisis that he plunged us into. It has brought the smile back on the faces of farmers with the Planting for Food and Jobs program. It has brought back the smile on the faces of Zongo people who are now a central part of Ghana's development planning agenda. Hitherto, they lived in the margins where the NDC turned them into vote banks. It has brought back the smile on the face of the sick who hitherto would die because there is no ambulance to take them to a hospital. We remember how in September of 2016, the NDC had to recall the allocation of all MDAs in order to pay salaries. We remember how teachers who went to education offices to request for recommendation letters were asked to bring their own paper, their own A4 sheets on which those letters would be typed. The Ministry of Education did not have the wherewithal to buy an A4 sheet for district education offices. We remember how a teacher in the Eastern region asked the then second lady for chalk and how she was chastised, derided, berated, and insulted by the then Minister for Education. We remember how we threw our hands up in despair and went to the IMF 
for a rescue mission because in candidate Mohammed's own words at that time quote we had eaten the meat to the bone unquote can you now imagine the irony fellow Ghanaians the people who were in need of a rescue now purport to be rescuers my uncle loves to say physician heal thyself candidate Mahama is the one that needs rescuing he needs rescuing from self-doubt he needs rescuing from indecisiveness as for we the Ghanaian people we have decided to choose vision decisiveness bold leadership and purposefulness these are the qualities that will take us to the promised land not self-doubt a leader needs to know where to turn otherwise you will crash the bicycle to Ghanaian youth I say this to you all the good things that you see happening today did not come about by accident they have come about as a result of careful planning born out of vision and I repeat vision and not just vision the vision of two presidents two successive MPP governments the government of President Kufuo and the government of Nana Adodanko Kufuado. If you are enjoying free SHS today, then you were probably born during the presidency of President Kufuo and your mother enjoyed free maternal health care. Then in your growing years, you had the national health insurance. It is important that you be reminded that the NDC walked out of parliament when the MPP introduced the National Health Insurance Bill in Parliament. They wanted nothing to do with it. Indeed, today, they are basically threatening, threatening to kill the National Health Insurance Scheme with their promise of free primary health care. The NHIS is, founded, is funded by premiums. So if people are supposed to access health care for free, why should they pay NHIS premiums? We are in grave danger of going back to the bitter years of cash and carry with the NDC's hollow promise of free primary health care. In any event, the NDC is not credible on health care. They promised in 2008 to introduce a one-time premium. What happened to it? Nothing. Why have they abandoned it? Why? It wasn't thought through? It wasn't thought through? Who thought that manifesto crafting processes are processes where the best brains of a political party come together, think through, examine all the theories, turn things upside down, and then they craft a program of action that is supposed to lead the way in Ghana's development. And then you craft a program like that, and now you don't want to have anything to do. You are not talking about one-time one premiums anymore. Amazing, amazing, amazing. The NDC has no plus policy credibility. For many young boys and girls across the country, the school feeding program is the reason they go to school. The school feeding program has galvanized enrollment and retention for millions of children. We must protect our progress. Let us vote for Nana Dodanko Ekufuado to move our country forward and secure our future. The discovery of oil was not by accident. The GMPC was always there. It was there in all the years that the NDC was in office and its antecedent organization, the PNDC. The GMPC was always there. But it was all over the place. It had no focus. It took the visionary and focused leadership of President Fukufo to refocus the energies of the GMPC to its core mandate. Even when President Kufuor's efforts paid off, they derided it and called it a jungle. They fought the free SHS program and every program that brings, brings relief and succor to people. Today, the United Nations humanitarian program says that there will be hunger in many parts of the world, including Africa, on account of COVID-19. Indeed, many countries are already experiencing the effects of COVID-19 on food production. Yet in Ghana, we are net exporters of food today 
thanks to the Planting for Food and Jobs program. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, why? We were not here in 2016 when Ghana was importing plantain from Cote d'Ivoire. Plantain from Cote d'Ivoire. If we must eat Kofi Brokman by the streets, that one too, we must go to Cote d'Ivoire. Thankfully, President Kufuado has taken out, out of that misery. And inshallah, the Ghanaian people will remember. They do not have short memories, as candidate Mahama believes. And the NDC knows that it has lost the election. So it is resorting to throwing in fake videos, alleging corruption on the part of the president. It will not wash. It will not wash. We believe that the Ghanaian people are very intelligent, discerning people. Why? This continent, you think it was an accident that we produced the JB Danquest and the Aqua Jays and the SD Dombos and the Professor Buziers and the likes by accident that we were the first country south of the Sahara to attain independence? It is by accident that we are called the Black Star of Africa? It is not by accident. It is by the intelligence, dexterity, tenacity, resilience, and sheer bravado of the people who constitute this country called Ghana. It is the reason we are who we are. So we do not have short memories at all. It is not true. I challenge that notion. I challenge that notion that Ghanaian people have short memories. I find it very insulting. It is not true. We are very we are a people who are very aware. And so they throw in these fake videos with the belief that people are not discerning. So they cannot discern the fake from the real. It's all over the social media. Yesterday they even dared to play it on a television station. We are coming after that television station. I'm sending notice to that television station that showed that fake video. It is defamatory of the president of the Ghana. We are not going to take it lying down. We are not going to take it lying down. It was unethical. It was unprofessional. And we are going to take you on. You take all videos of campaign donation and distort it, seeking to make it look like a recent video. Come on, come on, come on. Is the NDC so incompetent even at faking things? Faking, just fake something. Fake it, keke. There's a pastor who's been preaching sometimes and saying, in Kwi, Nkofobi Ohoa, Atemuda, Otufo Nyanko Ponka said, Nye wo si keke, nako heaven, kwa wanti mi nye nese. Nye wo si keke, nako heaven. E nye su wanti mi. Fiki keke, fiki, fiki adie, fiki. E nye su wanti mi fiki. Afi ope su ubu mai. You want to rule, run a nation, and you can't fake things. And listen to the spurious explanation that the president took in their fake video a bribe of $14,000. $40,000 in 2016 was 168,000 cities. 168,000 Ghana cities. Really? 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 And they think that people will believe. Let's even escalate it to $40,000 at current rates. That gives you about 230,000 Ghana cities. 230,000 Ghana cities. It cannot buy the engine of the Ford expedition that candidate Mahama took from Kanazoi. That this amount. It can't buy the engine of that Ford, ex 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 Ford expedition that you took. Hey! Pathetic souls. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, fellow Ghanaians, we should teach the NDC that decency and ethical behavior are, a very, are very much a part of politics. Indeed, politicians, more than everybody else, should be ethical. Governance is serious business.
when unethical people like those in the NDC assume the governance of a country, then what happened in Ghana pre-2016 is what happens. You have a demoralized society, collapsed businesses, co broken financial sector, collapsed educational system, and a ruined economy. We shall not go back. We are going to show you, and now I require you to turn your cameras. We are going to show you the original video and the fake video that they are putting out in the public space. And intelligent people as you are, you make your own judgment as to whether President Kufuado will take a bribe of 230,000 uh, CDs that cannot buy the engine of the Ford exped ex expedition that John Mahama took from Kanazo. Let's watch it. Good people of Ghana, as the election draws nearer, many are the issues issues that are rolling in the public domain some scandals some untruth truths so many issues are bubbling around one key issue that i want to talk about in this video is the issue of bribery allegation that is being put on nanado danko kufuado that issue i want to say it categorically that that issue is blatant falsehood. It's lies. It's concocted stories. It is just made for political vilification. Now, I saw the video. When I saw the video personally, I was I was surprised. I was like, ah, and I was I was a bit worried. But then I asked further, and then I saw this original video. Now watch the fake video. See what the lies and the concussion and the doctored things that has happened in that tape. Oh, you may not have the Okuhu and Chama. What was it? I don't know. 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 Yes, Mama, busy videos, be our training, and military for Into your excellency, and the pay by your grandmother, a larger bus, and since we are in a month for Hana, see a new office in your politics, and so see a new politics in office. We civil servants. On the Bonibia or Hot Dance. And so turn a man for time, I almost say, a begging out for hope. Say, Yamra, and the power to man, and can cry a woman to the old. Now, the good to be a good form. Now, turn out more time or no, one more, and a year. And so, a man for by a serious one for Sika be real. Now, almost say, or need the hour, you are betting me on forty thousand dollars in your family. Now, the good to do from the position of man, or more science for my dad. Okay, so I need to have a name. Yeah, and then watch the original tape so that you see exactly what happened. Watch the video. Or you may not at the Okuhu and Chama. What was it? I sent a man over a day. 
to see Madam Amabuzia. The Lady Fozia is a supporter of the MPP. She's a businesswoman. She says it in, in the video that she, they've been supporting the party, they've been supporting Nana, but she's never had the opportunity to meet Nana. So Madam Amabuzia links them to the former Ghana ambassador to Japan, His Excellency Ejei Bewa, who accompanies them to see Nanado. This lady mentions in her message when she allowed Yakubu to tell their story. Yakubu said it clearly that they had come to make a donation of T-shirts and 40,000. That 40,000 is 40,000 Ghana cities. 40,000. You watch the video. You can see on the sample t-shirt they brought. The 2016 slogan, Arise for Change 2016. It's on it. The t-shirt they brought has 2016 slogan on it. Arise for Change 2016. And still they want people to think that this is a new video. Now... In the doctored tape, in the doctored video, you see that immediately Yakubu mentions Nana's name and says, oh, Nana, I've met you before. Then all of a sudden, somebody that you already call it Nana, then he says, Your Excellency. Yeah, Nana. Ah, uh, Mitro uh, videos be uh, our training and uh, military for uh, into your excellency and the pay by a bonobo. 
ya la jabas ensense ya ntine na amafo hana se ye yin wo office ni na wo ye politics just to bring viewers mind to the point that he is talking to an already elected president that is a big lie this event took place way back in 2016 few months before the presidential elections one more reason that confirms the fact because i've i've looked into it and i've gotten the fact that's why i'm speaking confidently about this issue nanado makes mention that Pembira is his friend. And the lady Fozia also says, yeah, that's my uncle. And in their conversation, it becomes clear, vividly clear that he said the Pembira who was recently enskinned, the Pembira from all facts and records was enskinned on the 21st of August, 2016. The new chief will come back. In that doctored video, this Yakubu guy quickly jumps from when he's talking about the t-shirts to start, you know, and then he started talking about Alaji Abbas, all some name mentioning names and making requests, which were all not part of the original video. Until I saw the original video, I was like, hmm. But when I saw the original video, I was like, oh God, the God of MPP is good. The God of Nanado is so good. This is sheer wickedness. It's, it gets annoying. I mean, when would politics in Ghana become politics of issues, politics of what has been achieved by a government versus what another government had done? Why do we always have to force ourselves to find fault when there is no fault? Now, they've tried Nanadu so many times. They've said so many untruths about him. They've all not watched. Everything they stick, it comes down. Because Nanado is incorruptible. And this is clear. The donation is fully legal. The lady who came to make the donation is an MPP member who has been supporting the party already. She made a harmless donation. Even watch the lady's attitude. If you watch the video carefully, you see that. She's elated, meeting Nanado, you know, the fact that she's finally met him one on one. And she requests a photograph. She requests a photograph. Thank you so much. What's your name? Yakubu. Yakubu. Yes, daddy. How do you have a long mouth? You want to take a picture? Please, shall we take a picture? My mom will request it. And his agent, I charge you.